welcome back to the channel guys so the update is still going on right now and the patch notes came out so I figured I'd go ahead and just do a video on the patch notes while we wait for the wonderful servers to come back up uh, so let's go ahead and start in on this because it looks like they've added a lot of stuff there's a lot of information here um, <clears throat> so New daily ops mutations are coming to public events with a new season, improvements, ability to reroll challenges, and much more in game. So, update highlights mutation evasion at the top of every hour for the next three weeks. Public events will contain one mutation from our daily ops rotations. Completing these events nets you increased rewards and chances at rare plans. Daily ops improvements. We've added new locations, rewards, enemies, and a new mutation to encounter. And season 12 begins. Rip Daring is on the hunt for cryptids. Rank up to earn all the rewards. Uh, challenge reroll. Not a fan of the daily challenge. Now, once per day, you can reroll one daily or weekly challenge. An additional challenge rerolls can be claimed on the season 12 scoreboard. So that's pretty interesting that we'll be getting rerolls daily, which is kind of crazy. Here is the update size for everybody. Xbox, PC, PlayStation, Steam, Microsoft Store, PC, so everybody's got something different. New rotational events. So over the past four years, Appalachia has changed in many ways. While many of these changes are thanks to you, Pro Project Clean Appalachia, anyone, some of the changes are the results of daily long-lasting radiation exposure to the local inhabitants, otherwise known as a normal day in the wasteland. Mutations you've grown to know and love from daily ops missions are now spilling over into public events. Mutations invasions will increase the difficulty of public events or challenge you to change your playstyle, but not without hefty rewards. Until March 21st, a mutated public event will take place every hour at the top of the hour. These events are marked with a special icon to indicate that they are mutated. Public events for the remainder of the hour are normal events with no mutations. Completing a mutated event will grant you a mutated package in addition to its base rewards. Oh, so we still get the other rewards too. That's crazy. The following public events can now appear as mutated during the invasion. So test your metal, moonshine jamboree, eviction notice, load bearing, guided meditation, swarm of suitors, one violent night, uranium fever, line in the sand, and heart of the swamp. After the first three weeks of mutation invasion, this event will return every other week at the top of the hour for a week straight. Wow. As a reminder, these are the mutations. We have Volatile, Active Camouflage, Resilient, Freeze and Touch, Toxic Blood, Group Regeneration, Swift Footed. Um, the new reward mutated package. Completing a mutated public event will grant you its base rewards in addition to bonus currency and a mutated package. Mutated packages include meds, resources, ammo, a three-star legendary item, and a chance for the rare plans that drop from the other quests and events. Earn more rewards rewards with Fallout First. When participating in a mutated public event with at least three Fallout First members present, everyone earns more rewards. Regardless of if you're a subscriber or not, all event attendees will earn a mutated party pack, which is similar to the package but with increased rewards and increased chances for rare plans. That's pretty cool. All right, daily ops. So they added in reflective skin. Enemies periodically, periodically enter a reflective state that reflects back some of the direct damage done to them. It will also be in the events, new encounters, aliens, new locations, Charleston Capitol Building, Garahan Mining Headquarters, and Morgantown High School. New rewards, we've added new plans, floater tubes, Nasher Freezer, and Flamer. That's pretty cool. Hot Rod Handmade Skin. Nice. Flatwoods Monster. T oh my. Deep Space Alien Power Armor Skin and Jetpack. That is, those are awesome. Like, I actually might be doing daily ops now. Those are really cool rewards. Like, super cool. All right. Season 12. We've went over most of this stuff, so I won't bore you with that. I am going to post the link, though, so you guys can go check this out at your leisure. So, the reroll. This season, we're introducing to you a new feature to our seasons the reroller. The reroller gives you the ability to change out a daily or weekly challenge. Once per day, you can reroll one challenge for free. Fallout first members get an additional free reroll for the day, giving a total of free two, re two free rerolls. Challenge rerolls can be claimed for free on the season board or purchased in the Atomic Shop. Reroll challenges have a chance to become an epic challenge, Ooh. which offers even better rewards for completing it. Nice. 
So you might just want to re-roll things. Like, even if you like them, you might just want to re-roll them to see if you can get an epic. That, that sounds pretty crazy. In addition to the new content we've added, we also have implemented design changes to better benefit your playstyle. Settings. Enable camera shaking setting listed under display. By default, the setting will be set on. I will be turning that off as soon as I get into game. If anybody sees me not do it, go ahead and remind me. Um, design, general, revival. When players are revived by effects such as Mysteri Mysterious Savior and the Life Savings Legendary Armor, they are now healed by the item used for the revival. Rifles. Radium rifles now have an increased chance to learn mods while scrapping. Events. Stash box. Oh, added stash boxes to the following events. Radiation Rumble, Scorched Earth, Load Baron, Guided Meditation, Swarm of Suitors, One Violent Night, Uranium Fever, Line in the Sand, Heart of the Swap, and Colossal Problem. All are going to have stash boxes. That's crazy. Enemies, we've made improvements to enemy spawning and pathing during events. Heart of the Swamp, various uh, event improvements in difficulty, increases to enemy waves. Line in the Sand, remove the high frequency part of the alarm sound. That's, that's nice. One Violent Night, the emergency broadcast message at the start of One Violent Night is now shorter on repeat playthroughs, and the event now starts after turning on the jukebox instead of entering the beer house. Additionally, we've added an objective to repair or turn on the jukebox when it is broken or turned off. Very nice. Performance, various improvements. Swarm of Suitors added additional enemy waves and appropriate increased the time allotted to complete the waves. Souped up the mini bosses and gave them unique names. Pretty cool. Uranium Fever fixed an issue calling the highest, causing the highest tier rewards to not drop and surfaced the, surfaced the reward tiers in the objective text. Additionally, we've added objective markers for mole miner su supervisors. Nice. Freezing Touch, so this is mutation. Freezing Touch increased magnitude of the initial slow effect and decreased its duration. Remove stacking tiers. This makes Freezing Touch feel more responsive, applies immediately and wears off more quickly once you're out of the line of fire, as well as making it viable for melee enemies. Uh, previously, only ranged enemies would attack fast enough for this mutation to apply effectively. Resilient Throwing Weapons and Pain Train can now finish off enemies with Resilient Mutation. Volatile. Destructible objects are now affected by volatile explosions. Okay. NBC's vendors. Some wandering merchants will now sell healing salve recipes based on the region they're in. Oh my. That is really cool. Because those some of those recipes are really hard to get. I will tell you that people have grinded thousands of hours trying to get them. Let's see here. Seasons. Challenges. The daily Gold Star Challenge score award has been increased from 500 to 1,000. Ooh. The number of completed daily challenges required to complete the daily gold star challenge has increased from 5 to 6, though. Ooh. Challenges. The number of completed daily gold star challenges required to earn the weekly gold star challenge has increased from 1 to 3. Score all daily and weekly challenges have been adjusted to award score more consistently. Wallet. Daily script. Increase the daily script limit from 300 to 500. Script wallet increased the maximum amount of script that can be held from 5,000 to 6,000. All right. Bug fi fixes. So art and animation, the chainsaw, they fix the texture on the chainsaw while the flamer mod is equipped. Uh, shelters no longer hear unexpected water sound effects inside the neighborhood square shelter. Daily ops teams fixed an issue where teammates appear as in daily ops after daily ops is completed. Yep. Blood eagles remove dogs from daily ops. Blood eagle waves camp workshop and shelters so decor players no longer receive a one at stats by using the shooting target oh man that's awesome kwanzaa corn no longer floats mounted animal wall decor now saves in correct position if it was placed in and when placed in when a blueprint it. shelters will no longer show the budget being partially filled even when nothing has been built that's nice that you finally fixed that items various fixes to the slocum joe's bar counter set i know some bugs yesterday with that so that's good kits the abandoned mine kit half walls are now the same height as other half walls shelters players can now correctly place the ring fire pit and antler chandelier in their shelters Shelters fix an issue that allow players to view out of world while using photo mode and shelters. Workbenches create a new build menu for the Pegasus Weapons Workbench. Nice. Okay, challenges. Crafter Scrap. The Jack-O-Lantern Helmet now correctly counts towards Crafter Scrap challenges. And Nuka Twist now correctly counts towards Consume Nuka Cola challenges. Super Mutant Behemoth. Adjustments to the behemoth's resistances. Behemoths now correctly have cold and fire resistance. 
player level, fixed an issue causing XP value awarded to be displayed incorrectly at very high levels. High levels will now be displayed correctly for others, and the maximum player level is now 32,767. Wow, who has played that much? 32,767, that's their level. That's nuts. Items, uh, apparel, junkyard cultist helmet now correctly prevents airborne disease. Deathclaw mascot helmet now correctly provides damage and disease resi resistance from airborne hazards. Um, Brotherhood of Steel, Steel Re Recon helmet now shines in the right direction. Consumables fixed an issue that could result in a crash after a nuke of quantum candies. I wondered why that always happened. I thought it was just coincidence. I had never, like, actually tested it out, though. Decor, the hot rod on blocks now requires steel instead of wood to craft. Well, that makes sense. Mannequins, power arm armor mannequins no longer have an apparel tab in the transfer menu. Power armor. Blackbird Elite Power Armor headlamps now display correctly. They changed some language issues, perks, fixed an issue that could sometimes cause perk cards to become unequipped. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Tenderizer perk is now correctly stacks up to 40. Butcher's Bounty now applies to Tick Blood. Union Power Armor now benefits from sizzling style. Bows cannot benefit from the 250 damage resistance from the reloading legendary perk and no longer can drop with that mod. Quest and events fix an issue that could prevent some players from hearing the NPC dialogue at the start of an event. Heart of the Swamp fixed an issue that could cause the objective to find the Strangler Heart to become stuck. That has definitely happened to me. New arrivals players no longer can be stuck inside the biometric scanner. That's super nice. Stability, Heart of the Swamp. Uh, various performance improvements along with test your metal weapons auto axe it is no longer possible to roll the faster swing speed legendary mod on auto axes so that they get rid of all that on everybody else's or are they still in game that that's the new legacy right now energy weapons the ultra set laser gun now has slightly increased base damage crusader pistol the cryo and pyro receiver mods for the crusader pistol now correctly use cryo cell and fuel respectively heavy weapons adjusted the first person view while in the midnight watch power armor with a heavy weapon equipped fort defiance fixed an issue where turrets could disappear after fast traveling turrets will always be present at fort defiance Interface Fanfare. Players will no longer continue to receive the fanfare and tutorial pop-up after encountering items such as treasury notes, holiday gifts, mole minor pills, and more. Notifications. Players will no longer receive the pacifist as enabled notification while in events and on teams. Uh, menu. Items that cannot be sold to NBC vendors no longer show a value in the inspect menu. Well, that's super nice. Well, that's it, guys. What did you guys think? Sounds exciting. So I'm, I'm even more excited to start this whole mutation invasion. I super love this artwork. All right, guys. I hope you have a great day in the wasteland. Hopefully, I'll see you at the live stream. If not, take care and let me know how you're loving the new season and new events. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Take care.